You're listening to Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong, all on Georgia Radio Network. Welcome to the Thanksgiving edition, episode 92 of the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. I'm Dave Roberts. Hi, Dave Roberts. (laughs) Her wit is sharp enough to carve a turkey. It's Jessica Salagi. Hey, Dave. (laughs) How was your week? My week was good. How was your week? Expensive. Oh, no. What happened? I fell asleep in my recliner, which old men often do. Uh, with my MacBook Pro in my lap. And uh, when I got up, of course, it hit the floor. And it was uh, a slow death after that for for that computer. So I had to go over to I Love My Geek, which is owned by Robin Stern, who we had on the show, (laughs) and go and buy a a new MacBook. Oh, no. Which, because of my professionalism with this show, I immediately came home and, and tested with the, uh, with the microphone to make sure it would work. Your dedication is, first of all, unprecedented. I'm looking at you, Matt and Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Second, I mean, dang, I don't even know if I would have done that. And Matt would still, would still be at home going, damn it. Wait a minute, this, this doesn't have the right plug. I have to buy an adapter? Uh, I can't record tonight. Right. <laughs> yeah, but he'd make sure to tell us 10 minutes before we were going to start recording. Oh, no, 10 minutes before we started recording, he'd tell us he's on the way home. <laughs> right. It wouldn't be until 20 minutes after we're supposed to start recording that we'd find out that the... Uh, he can't uh, he make it. A, he needs an aid after kit to uh, to plug into the uh, uh, into the microphone. Which, yes, it does. It needs an aid after kit. To, the new MacBooks don't have the same USB ports on them, so you have to get a thing. A thing? A thing. Is the thing expensive? No. In fact, uh, they went ahead and got it for me. And because I'm a klutz, they went ahead and ordered a, uh, a, a case for me. Like, yeah, we don't want to see... Like, they don't, they don't want to see me again. So That's right. They got a case in the, uh, in the uh, thing. They're, they're great. They're good folks over there. They're like, here are all the things that you need. Please don't come back. Right. It, I mean, it was a... It was a a good deal, but MacBooks are expensive. Right. Well, that's just never an expense that, I mean, that you want. I mean, you you need it, but you don't want to do it. Yeah, and I'm also in that business. No one wants to spend money in an air conditioner. Nobody wakes up like, boy, I can't wait to go AC shopping today. Right. So, I, I get it. I get it from from, from their standpoint, so... I didn't dicker over price or anything else. I'm like, just just give me the MacBook Pro. Just give me give give me that. Uh, and they they swapped my uh, uh, hard drive over to it or, or transferred all the data for me and just went in the next day picked it up and it was like my old one except faster and more buttons that I don't know how to use. We'll, we'll be praying for you. <laughs> Stay strong. Yeah. Stay strong. Just Dave. keep Stay at strong. it. Yeah. <laughs> so. How did I do this one the first time? Julian Assange. <laughs> Rape investigation is closed after nine years. So, Julian Assange was uh, accused of rape in Sweden almost a decade ago. Uh, and, of course, he, is, he spent several years, seven or eight years, at, in the Ecuadorian, uh, in exile, essentially, in the Ecuadorian uh, Consulate, or uh, or embassy, in London. In London, uh, and he was accused of having unprotected sex with a woman while she was sleeping. Uh, and she said she had repeatedly refused to have unprotected sex with him. How bad is this dude? If she says she didn't wake up. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but, you know, it, they do define rape differently than we do here. And the prosecutor, I think it was, ended up saying 
that they didn't have enough evidence um, to move forward at this point, obviously, because it's taken nine years. But I thought it was interesting that they kind of blamed it on him, like, fleeing and going to the embassy and said that they, they couldn't interrogate him and that their attempts to interview him were stonewalled and eventually happened via video conference from the embassy or something. And they made it seem like that was the holdup, um, even though he's maintained his innocence that it, 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 it that's not what happened for the entire time. And then later in the same interview, the prosecutor said that it wouldn't have made a difference if, if they had talked to him again or something. So it, I just felt like um, this was like a long time coming. This is why he ended up in the this is this was the beginning of the end of his situation. And look, I've said on the show before, he's a creepy dude. Like he's creepy, creepy. Uh, there's a video of him dancing up on a woman in a discotheque somewhere, and it just he's awkward and tall and lanky and just just creepy doesn't mean he's guilty uh man the the accusation is doesn't even sound like it, it would hold water in most places i slept through the whole thing I, I, now didn't say she was drugged didn't say she was under the influence of anything mm-hmm. but she slept through the whole the whole affair i'd be more insulted with that than the accusation it's definitely an odd story and I I think it's a disservice it's a disservice to her to him to the system whatever their system may be how good or bad it may be that it took this long and it's one of I mean sexual assault and rape and all those sexually um oriented I guess offenses or of a sexual nature um they never whether you're guilty or not they never they never leave you. I mean, there's plenty of people who convicted him in their mind because they didn't like him. And it was just the the start of the snowball down the hill. Um, So I think that's unfortunate because we'll never know. Right. He'll, he'll never get, get his day in court. And, and look, I, again and again and again, I said, we, we defend the the most horrible people here, but you're right. The, the, there is a stigma that will go with you for the rest of your life just being accused of it. I mean, whether you're Clarence Thomas or... or uh, um, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. And, and, and you said on the show, there's plenty of reasons to oppose Kavanaugh's uh, uh, nomination to, to, to SCOTUS. Ford wasn't one of them. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I, you didn't have to get into all that. And it's the same thing here. Like, you don't have to... You can dislike what he has done or his 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 purpose and his projects. You can dislike all of that and think he's innocent. But you can keep those separate. If A reasonable person would keep those separate, I think. But... Right. So, yeah, that's the the Assange thing. Uh, Case closed. Yeah. I mean, a decade. And, and the uh, statute of limitations on all the charges is about to run out in 2020 anyway. And uh, so, but he's, he is, he's still, he's in prison, in, uh, prison in the UK, isn't he? He is. I think it was a 50 week sentence and that was just earlier this year. So he's, which is basically a year. Um, and then what, he's got to be extradited here. That's what they say. We'll find out. Stay tuned. Yeah, on the next episode. <laughs> so, 42% of Americans think attendance at the White House for sports championship recognition should be mandatory. 58% say it should be the player's decision, which if I take off my shoes and count, that adds up. <laughs> so, this sounds like one of those polls that you only got two options, which is my favorite kind of poll. Like, I don't like when you give people the opportunity to be undecided. Take a take on a position, like take a side, and and run with it. Man up. Yeah, well, the <laughs> man up, come up with a decision. Well, the people who, who don't just hang up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the opposition to mandatory attendance was the highest among Democratic voters, with seventy one percent saying the players should decide for themselves. Sixty six percent of independents and thirty four percent of Republicans agreed. Uh, just because of who is in the White House uh, right now. So, 
Where yeah. are you on it from as a as an expert on all things sports ball? Yeah, so you know, I am an expert, and first first and foremost, I'm an expert on having an opinion. So that obviously sets me aside, but. I think it's a waste of time and resources, and I appreciate it. It's just like the Medal of Honor with for sports and things of that sort. Like, it's nice, but all it does is stir up this kind of crap. And every time a team wins anything, which is frequently because we got sports going all dang year, every time someone wins, then it's just a ticking time bomb of when we're going to hear whether or not Who's go like which players are going to go, or if the team's going to decline, or if they actually support the president, and why are they getting political, and they shouldn't go, and now I'm upset with that. Like it's just a bunch of emotions that shouldn't even be involved with the White House, and it's similar to me. It's like the legislature doing their resolutions of making feel, people feel good. Like just stop, just just do less of everything. Right. Well, and it started off with with uh, uh, smaller things, being an all-American. For, uh, and it's, it has come to include everything. It, I think Michael Jordan really had the, the best quote when they asked him about getting into politics, about, about commenting on, on politics. And he says, uh, well, Republicans buy shoes too. <laughs> you know, he, he knows what his business is. And these teams as far as I'm concerned, have the right to require their employees to show up at an event. Absolutely. Uh, now, there are people who skip these events for other reasons that are extra political. Uh, guys having a baby. Somebody's sick. Uh, I really wasn't expecting to win, so I had a vacation planned that week. Uh, but, you know, there's there's pictures of, of Bob Kraft, who is tends to be a right-leaning person uh, handing Obama a signed helmet. It's n- it's not even it's not a political thing. It's just a it's an honor to 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 be to be invited and st- and st- stand there with with the president, go to the White House and it's one of the just ceremonial things of winning a championship. I so I'm 100% with you that it is an honor. Anybody who is invited to the freaking White House, I don't care who the president is. It is an honor to be invited. If you respect the office, like that's what we used to think about. That's that was the national consensus, but it's turned into such a frenzy. I feel like it just does more harm than good, and it, it hurts the president. It hurts no matter who it is. It hurts this the teams. It hurts the coaches. It just there's. I don't see the positive. Well, until I researched the story, I didn't realize how long the tradition goes back. And it goes back to 1865 with oh, I bet. Uh, Andrew Johnson uh, bringing in the Brooklyn Atlantics and Washington Nationals amateur baseball clubs to, to come and meet at the White House. Uh, Reagan is was really the first to regularly bring teams in uh, to, to, to bring it. And, and look, it, it, Larry Bird sat out... Uh, meeting Reagan uh, Michael Jordan instead of going to meet uh, Bush 41 went to spend time with family uh, and well, he, and he didn't make it a statement about about Bush either he said look my schedule's hectic haven't been with family uh, so that's yeah. if, if that and I don't know which way that went he just he didn't want to make a make a huge statement he just I mean, didn't want to but if you recall, the media didn't used to harp on it. They would mention it, and then everyone would just move on. But it wasn't, like you said, he didn't mention Bush. He just said what he wanted to say. I'm, I'm not able to attend, and I appreciate the the extension of the offer, and you all have fun. I mean... Right, yeah, and it's, it's a huge honor. But on the whether they should be re- required, and that's a interesting term... To be required because they are employees uh, and if your employer who pays you millions of dollars says we we need you to go do this and look the, it's not like this is out of line with what uh, professional athletes do 
all that time you see them getting pictures in, in children's hospitals and all that, not because they're good guys. I'm not saying that they're not good guys, but they have a schedule and they have, there's somebody for every team that coordinates community service. So you see them out building houses and all that stuff, that's required. It's expected of them. It goes to the, uh, this idea that uh, whatever league is do is doing good, so they're expected to go do these hospital visits. And I'm not saying it's not; they don't. I don't want to say enjoy, but that they don't get something from going and seeing sick kids. But it is an expectation at a certain level of uh, of athletic competition that you are going to do stuff like that. You're going to visit a sick fan. You're going to go to hospitals. You're going to hang out with Jimmy Carter and build houses. So I don't think showing up at the White House is, is any different if that if that is something that, that that team owner believes is going to further his brand. Sure. I mean, you signed a contract for millions of dollars. If your right. boss wants you to be there, you should probably be there. Yeah. Give me a hundred million dollars. And, and tell me I've got I've got to go uh, shake hands with Hillary Clinton. You'll be big doo doo eating grin on my face. <laughs> yeah, Give a big old hug. Exactly. Yeah. Man. So mandatory is is a tough word. It's not it's, it's not the law saying they have to, but you're representing your club. So a man in Colorado has upset his neighbors because he takes off and lands in a helicopter from his own yard. I love this man. Tell us why. Well, I live in Atlanta, and the idea of having a helicopter pick me up and take me me home would be great. So Jonathan Sawyer has been grounded after his neighbors complained uh, uh, about his helicopter takeoffs once a month. Once a month. Yeah, that was what really got me was... Come on. It's not like he's doing it every day at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., like each kid going to a different school, wife, everything. It's just once a month. And helicopters need a fair amount of space. Unless they're taking them up in a litter and hoisting them up from the ground, in order to land a helicopter, you need a fair amount of space. So I'm assuming this guy owns some property. Well, if you look at, I mean, and we we can post this article on the page after the show drops, but if you look at the video and the, the line from his house, I mean, his driveway is at least, at least a half a mile long. Yeah, and look, helicopters are noisy once a month. The system is complaint-based because of the rural-like community and the lack of inspectors available to drive around looking for violations, or as I call them, pricks. (laughs) Drive around looking for violation. The rule with the zoning is that if it's not expressly permitted, it's not permissible at all. That's an interesting... That's an interesting... That's the problem with zoning. Matt Lowe. Yes, but like, <laughs> absolutely. But, you know, when you have spot zoning or you have permissible use or however your city or county phrases it of the control, instead of just saying, I mean, we're, we're dealing with this with a with the proposed landfill in one of the counties that I cover. The ordinance doesn't say one way or the other under the uses for the type of in light industrial that it is. So the assumption is that you cannot because it's not expressly stated. Well, that's kind of a frightening thought that not only does the government restrict your your property rights, but if you if they left something out, you definitely can't do it because they didn't think of it. Well, let's go to the absurd. Uh it doesn't expressly say that I can throw the baseball in the backyard. Well, if you, in this case specifically, it says, it doesn't say anything about fireplaces. So you can't have a fireplace or a chimney on your home because it's not written in the ordinance. Right. And that's not how our system of government works. You can't just put things in a catch-all. This would not work in any other aspect of, of the law. You couldn't do that in criminal court. You have to, with, with criminal allegations, you have to specifically say, you may not kill somebody. Uh, uh, 
is not or these are the exceptions to to it but you it's not like you you just can't you can't say that you may not go 56 miles an hour in a 55 you may not go 57 <laughs> you may not go 58 because that's absurd so you it doesn't work doesn't work anywhere else in the law except for zoning and zoning is your neighbors getting together to tell you what you can do on your own property mm-hmm. i say this as i sit on the uh, planning and zoning appeals board yeah, I was about to say, tell us more about how you hear appeals on what neighbors say about their neighbor's you, property. You know what I do on that board? Tell me. I, I stare down until all the idiotic questions are done. I look up, look around, everybody's done talking, motion to approve. That's If you watch any of the any, any of my, my stuff on the local access channel, that's all it is, is Dave staring down. Because I'm embarrassed to, to be there, people asking permission to my... And just wait till all the idiots stop talking and make a motion to approve. And then what happens? Power of suggestion. It, it, we haven't voted anything down yet that I've been there. I make the motion to approve. It gets seconded. It moves on through. You hear that, folks? Take your appeal. Yeah, oh, please. Bring it to me. I got to hear one uh, n- next week. That is, someone wanting to put their house within twenty feet of the uh, of the line instead of thirty. Mm-hmm. And this is a five-acre piece of property that is has a uh, uh, an easement, so it's a long driveway to get to the square that is their five acres, and they and they want to go within twenty feet of their property line, and their neighbors already saying, "Well, it's cool with us." They still have to come before the board. And there'll still be 30 minutes of questions about what type of house you're building. Before. That's obnoxious. It is, before I go motion to approve, and it, it'll get approved. So anyway, that, that that is way off topic. Hey, you and I are off on a hog trail. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how long does it take for a helicopter to crank up and take off and be up high enough where it's not making it windy or loud it really depends on how long it's sitting idling on the ground now if if the bird is coming in hot and you're ready to go it could be on it could be on on the ground for a minute it lands it's safe uh the guy get, gets on buckles up and it's gone in less than a minute or it could sit there idling for 10 minutes waiting for the dude which I wouldn't want to pay for fuel for a helicopter for to idle for ten minutes, but waiting for the guy to, to come out of his house. But it's once a month. Once a month. If your neighbor was having a uh, was playing loud music once a month, and it was you know, I don't see anything in the article that says it's like at odd hours, at three o'clock in the morning. Okay. You wouldn't say anything about it. Once a month, he puts he plays music outside, goes gets in his pool. Not a big deal. It's once a month. What kind of, I mean, joyless, like, awful existence do you live where you're like, that son of a bitch in his helicopter? I'm going to call the government. I'm going to call the government on you. Not even the cops, but the actual government. Like, you called your city or your county commissioners to file a complaint. Oh, no, I guarantee this was not the first call. First call was probably to the police, and they're like, so? They probably called the FAA, and the FAA's like, so? (laughs) Right. And he's just flipping through. It's like, oh, well, I'm messing, on his, messing with the zoning. And some guy whose job it is to measure the length of the grass in your front yard shows up and tells him he can't land a helicopter. So these are our opinions. <laughs> and not necessarily those of all on Georgia. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, but I mean, who among us has not thought how awesome it would be to have a helicopter come Absolutely. Pick you up and take you to work? I mean, uh, you had to drive from Atlanta today, didn't you? I did. And, I mean, you know, I have a massive open field in my behind my house that is mine. Part of my property it was added to my property um, a few years ago. It was another lot, and it was purchased so that the house couldn't be built right behind me. So I have plenty of room to take off a helicopter. And I'll be Which is the proper way to make sure that you control what other people build around you. That's right. Is go and buy the property. Yeah. The saying down here is, no, I don't want to own all the land. I just want to own everything that touches mine. <laughs> but that, 
it, yeah, that's how you equal. Yeah, that's how you equal. That's how you put yourself in a position where you cannot be, you know, you, you buy enough where you have a buffer from a propane tank that someone puts in, or you you buy enough where you have. You don't have to worry about someone's chicken houses or their helicopter or whatever. You you put yourself in a position. Otherwise, you got to coexist. And if they're not harming your property, shut up. And it's one of the things that that, that I, whenever I, I'm flipping around the interwebs, and there's a, a, a couple of, uh, you know, Paulding County Facebook groups, of course. One is, uh, you know, open government. Another, there's several out there. Uh, Paulding County Uncensored. And somebody will pop up there. I'm telling you, monthly, speaking of monthly. Uh, that says, what are they opening up on such and such and such and such? A dollar general. We don't need one of those. We need a red lobster. Or we need this. We need that. So why don't you go take your money, risk your money, and go open up what you think we need? <laughs> Which usually is... Uh, Radio sounds. Yeah. yeah you, you get nothing but static back. Yeah. You're like, oh. You mean a free market person? Like, obviously, we do need another dollar store because they're risking a couple million dollars to build the damn thing. Right. And they keep doing it. So they're obviously benefiting from it because they're literally taking up every corner in America. Right. And obviously, they're making money. Right. As they so, should. So, I mean, don't hate the play, hit the game. You can't beat them, join them. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I just got to figure out how to get in that racket. And by the way, that was one of the one of the motions that I did make to approve was for a Dollar General. And, wow, what a traitor! Oh, and the uh, uh, some of the church folks for that that this property backs up to come out there. And say, we just want to ask: Will you be selling alcohol? Mm-hmm. He's like, "Well, I'm the contractor, but I don't think Dollar General sells alcohol." Oh, okay, well, we they don't sell wine, don't they? I don't have no idea. I, I, I have no idea. But they said, "They said well, we don't need alcohol in our community." This property sits right across the street from a Publix that sells beer and wine and everything, everything else. Oh, my hard lemonade, like everything. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, I mean, never have I walked down the street and been assaulted by a bottle of vodka. Yeah, I've assaulted a few, but I, no, I, I haven't been, you know, beaten by a bottle of vodka. Well, I have been beaten by a bottle of vodka once or twice, but usually mm-hmm. that happens in the morning. That's right. <laughs> so. Into the main topics of the show, a wild and almost unbelievable story of an Indiana, out of Indiana. I can't even read, and you wrote it well too. I know. I like teed this up to, to give you like a great introduction instead of just reading the title of the article, at and you're episode, slaughtering it. At episode ninety-two, I still suck at reading. <laughs> you're the host. <laughs> A wild and almost unbelievable story out of Indiana where a man who removed the police GPS tracker from his vehicle when he discovered it was charged with theft. So this was this article or this story I saw on kind of one of those techie sites that I, I don't read a lot. And so I was like, is this true? Like I go- I read the article, looked at the guy's name, Googled his name. And sure enough, I mean, it was all over the place. So it has been verified, and I actually found the c- case in the Indiana Supreme Court. So I just want to preface with that because it's one of those things that you read it and you're like, there's no way. Like, how is that not entrapment? Right. It started back in July of 2018 when a Warwick County Sheriff's Office got a warrant to attach a GPS tracking device to Derek, uh, whatever's car. I think it's hearings. Hearing? I told you, I'm bad at reading after a confidential informant tipped them off that he might be selling meth. Uh, the GPS worked for a little more than a week, but stopped, and police thought uh, Herig uh, found it and took it off. That's an important part. Remember that. They thought he found it and took it off. Think. Think. Not, not, not know. Not saw. Think. Uh, police waited another 10 days to see if data would be transmitted, but it did not. So they applied for a warrant to search his home and nearby property belonging to his parents. To meet the probable cause that a crime had been committed standard, police said they suspected that he had committed the crime of theft by taking the GPS device off. Or taking the GPS device. So he didn't know that they took out a warrant to do this. I mean, I'm assuming that 
they're either sealed or they're there's obviously a process I'm not that I'm not familiar with and I should have done that before the show but I didn't but he the the man the driver the owner of the vehicle whatever was not aware that this tracking device was on his car so he nobody has I haven't found anything and maybe you have but I haven't read anything where they said whether or not he admitted he took it off or if it fell off or he he hasn't sp- spoken to where it went right not that I've seen, but they did find the tracking device. They also found methamphetamine and drug paraphernalia, paraphernalia evidence that police say that showed that he had been dealing drugs. So he was charged with both drug dealing and theft of the GPS device. This is my favorite part. The government says it wouldn't be theft to remove it if it were put there by a private party. But Warren gives legal basis to have the device there, even though he was not notified it was placed on his car. And it wasn't identified as, like, property of the, uh, what was it, Warren County Sheriff's Office or, like, they didn't say anything. If found, please return to... <laughs> Just have a little thing. You being tracked, yo. Yeah, it didn't say anything. So, for all he knows, it could have been another dealer. It could have been, you know someone he allegedly sold it could have been anybody and he just saw it on his car and took it off wouldn't anybody take a tracking device off their car if they didn't put it there themselves yeah i might i mean i might stick it on somebody else's car sure but you would take it off yours oh yeah yeah yeah. but 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 i'm but you know not a very nice guy i'd go find a police car to stick it on uh so his legal defense uh lawyers have argued that the search had been Ill- illegal because the police didn't have probable cause to believe their client had committed theft. The defense pointed out that the device could have fallen off the car by accident or simply malfunctioned. He also couldn't have known it belonged to the government even if he did take it off his car. And I, and I like your next note. What law did he violate? Right. So if he didn't know that it was there... He, or he didn't know it was put there by a warrant. He didn't know it was put there lawfully. What What? What did he do wrong? Did he know it was a tracking device? I don't know. I don't know what a tracking device looks like. I mean, I've right. seen them in the movies, but like... Yeah, it has a little red light on it and big right. blinks. Yeah, and it, yeah, I have no idea what a tracking device looks like. I mean... It, it could be it could look like a hide a key with a magnet and go I didn't put this here you take it and throw it in your trash can I, there's I have no idea what it looks like I, it, the the expectation that first of all to steal something you have to kind of know that it's somebody else's or at least know that it's not yours right <laughs> and they also didn't hide it very well they kind of suck at their job where if, did they put it I don't know Oh. Obviously not somewhere that he didn't find it. Yeah. Or maybe he has one of those things that you also see in the movies where you like, put, or, oh. you know, the little stick with the mirror on the bottom <laughs> that you run under the car. <laughs> I was thinking about the bug detector that you see yes. in every, every like Bond film where yes. it goes around the room like beep, 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 beep. <laughs> oh, and he quietly points at that lamp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, like, he pulls I, it out as like the size of a fly. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I don't even know what what this tracking device looks like. For all we know, they took like a four foot whip antenna with a magnet stuck on the top of his car. And they got mad when he took it off. Well, and so he's not a very good dealer. If over ten days he didn't make a deal, because they got ten days worth. I, that's something else I thought of. It's like you. That's what you use for a warrant. You didn't use the fact that he'd been hanging out at drug dens. <laughs> known spots or or we got the tracking data and went there and those are definitely meth heads he was talking to right. I mean is I'm not saying he's not a meth dealer I have no idea if he has all his teeth and had meth he's probably dealing it not smoking it but but they you're right they had a week and a half worth of data and that wasn't enough to get a warrant to search him for meth and, and what do you think about them searching his parents' house, too? I felt like that was a little bit of a reach. I don't care what this... I mean, I know we don't know the specifics, but I do feel like that's a reach just because they're an adjoining property. doesn't mean that... 
Well, we'd have to know a lot, lot more. Like if uh, if his official residence isn't his parents' house and he's living on a on a house that's on their joint property, if it's not titled the same. I mean, I, I, there's there's a lot to go on with that as far as reasons that it could be valid would be it's it, he lived on a house on his parents' property that the same house was on or that the 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 his driver's license had his parents' house listed as a, his official address maybe that had is it. not what it was to my understanding I, you're you're right that there are other extenuating circumstances but what you have mentioned is not the case from my understanding and they weren't watching his parents then all, all they did was violate his parents' rights. Fourth, Fourth Amendment rights, for sure. And maybe, and or possibly that's the, the data they got, is that he goes to his parents' house before he goes and goes on his meth runs. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe mom's a hell of a cook, and she, she makes some great meth. I don't know. So when he had his initial he, trial on these charges, his attorneys at the time filed motions to suppress the evidence because they said that it was obtained illegally and, you know, not handled appropriately or constitutionally. And the trial court said, sorry, the evidence is in. So they filed an appeal after he was found guilty. And the appeals court earlier this year sided with the trial courts. Now, that doesn't really mean much because appeals really deal with the procedure and not so much with the constitutionality, which is why they filed an appeal again, and that's why it's going before the state Supreme Court for constitutionality. Um, Because the appeals court, in their opinion, they said that we conclude that the affiant provided sufficient evidence in the affidavits to establish probable cause to believe the GPS tracking device had been stolen. Well, sure, at that point, like, you put a GPS tracking device on there, and it's gone, and so it's been stolen. But my whole thing was, what led you to believe it was stolen by him? Right. Yeah, I was about to say, by whom? Right. And therefore, the warrants to search the device were valid, or search for the device were valid. Because these warrants were valid, the evidence discovered during the execution thereof and pursuant to the subsequent warrants for narcotics and paraphernalia do not constitute fruit of the poisonous tree. So I disagree with, I disagree with the first part that there was probable cause to find... I mean, there there was probable cause that they were stolen, but you had no probable cause to believe that it was him. None at all. Because right. if it was still transmitting data, you would have been pinging at his house for the next 10 days, and it's they a, weren't getting anything. It's a foreign object on your vehicle. So and, if, if, you, if you saw this thing, and you took it off and say, gee, that's not mine, you throw it away, that's theft. And that's and that's their that's their reasoning behind it. The it absolutely does hinge a hundred percent on on the uh, uh, on the stolen stolen tracker to to make their case. This is sort of I'm not going to not make any accusation, but let let's just say if you wanted an excuse to search somebody, this would be a great way to do it. Judge, we have a tracker on the vehicle, and it stopped transmitting. Mm-hmm. But I, I think the judge who signed the warrant was wrong. Oh, sure. I think the judge in the trial courts was wrong, and I think the appeals courts got the first part wrong. I, I agree that if the warrant... Because, like I said, the, the appeals deal with specifically with procedure, not actual constitutionality of the issue. So they said if the warrants were valid, then the evidence discovered was valid. I don't agree that the warrants were valid, but if the if they're ruling that the warrants were, then by default, it's not fruit of a poisonous tree. So, you well, know, that's, yeah. that's where... Right, we're back where we started. But so the Supreme... The state Supreme Court earlier this month, I think two weeks ago had their oral arguments and they're just doing their little deliberations thing now but one of the justices said if somebody wants to find me to do harm or somebody wants to find me to do harm to me and it's not the police and they put a tracking device on my car and I find a tracking device and I dispose of it after stomping on it 25 times I would hope they would not be able to go to a local prosecutor and somehow I'm getting charges filed against me for destroying someone else's property that's Justice David. And he also was quoted saying in another article, like, 
his, I guess, speaking a little bit more freely, he was like, I'm having a hard time seeing how this is theft. Yeah, it seems like a tall order. I mean, it's a real tall order to call it theft. It, if he if he broke into a police vehicle, grabbed a tracking device, ran off with it, it would be the dumbest theft ever. <laughs> Steal a tracking device. That's theft. Finding something that doesn't belong on your vehicle and throwing it away, I, it, I have a really hard... And I know the law has different definitions of words that we use every day, but that's not theft. And it sounds to me like the appeals court took the the end result, which was dude's a meth dealer, and then worked backwards and found a way to justify it. Well, that's the problem with appeals courts. They're just procedural. Well, this is absolutely procedural. Right, but they're not looking at the procedure from the forward perspective they're rolling backwards right so the the indiana supreme court will be will be the uh uh the big one there you think and that i mean the government has put a lot of effort into this position do you think that if he is successful um that it will get appealed higher god i hope so Wait. I, I, I'd like to, I would like to see a, a ruling from SCOTUS that that puts it puts an end to that practice. This is another prime example of if you don't tell the government they can't do it, they'll do it until you do. Right. And so I would I would like to see know. this 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 handed out nationwide. And look, I'm not crying for this guy being in prison, but it absolutely we if you don't stand up for for principles. And that's what this is, is principle. Then you, you don't stand for anything. And the, the police have an obligation to provide true probable cause, not... I don't even know where they got the damn uh, probable cause to put a tracker on the guy's vehicle. The confidential informant. If you... Is that just lazy police work? I understand. I understand when I'm not talking about the CI. I'm talking about put a tracker on the vehicle instead of investigating the guy I don't know I I guess like my other like I said my other question is what were you hoping to find with the tracker and how come you didn't find it within 10 days how long were you planning on keeping that on there well and CIs are are notoriously uh, uh, notoriously unreliable look I know I knew Jason Smith who was the uh, uh, Red Dog Atlanta officer that went to prison for for 10 years for taking the word of one CI as where he was buying drugs, because CIs are bad guys too, uh, ended up killing a woman. And he did 10 years for it. He's an Atlanta police officer. Uh, and then he went to another CI and tried to get him to lie and, say, and verify the stuff they got. And, and what happened was they were beating the door down. This old lady, they didn't identify as herself. This old lady shot through the door trying to defend herself, and they lit her up. Uh, so when when we take actions based on the word of other criminals, that's problematic. And you know it was bad enough in Atlanta to where they disma- disbanded the uh, the Red Dog team. Right. I I think. The unfortunate part about this is it sucks from start to finish. And if the entire thing is not thrown out, I think you compromise the integrity of all the investigations because they're going to keep getting challenged. And I think that you continue to hurt like police community Interactions just on this kind of stuff alone. I mean, you're putting some, you're giving me something, and I get rid of it, and you charge me with a crime. Right. Speaking of crimes, a mother may have to register as a sex offender for being topless in her own home. A Utah woman is facing charges after she says her stepchildren spotted her topless in her own home. Tilly Buchanan, or as we call it in Paulding County, Buckhannon, is charged with a misdemeanor that could force her to register as a sex offender. 
Her lawyers in court Tuesday uh, were in court last Tuesday asking a judge to strike down the law banning women from being topless. I had to, uh, I did some digging on this because this is, of course, the booby segment of the week, apparently, since we covered them last week or uncovered them. Ha! Huh. Wow, that's freaking hilarious, Dave. <laughs> God. You know, I crack me up. Jeez. So, as the story goes, she and her husband were in the garage hanging sheetrock. One story says they were putting up insulation. And they didn't want to get dust all over their clothing. So, they took their shirts off. And then she took her bra off. And her three stepchildren... Uh, saw it, and uh, uh, this is where the charge comes from. So, I just want to preface, before you go any further, I think it's really weird that she did this. Just, you know, that doesn't mean it's a crime, I just, I think it's really weird. But go on. Yeah, I mean... It's not totally unlike the way we painted my house. Because it, it, whatever you wear gets ruined. We also don't have any children. Um, so anyway, she tells her kids it's the same. It should be no different than, than their father taking his shirt off to work. Uh, to work in the garage. Which we had this conversation last week. You can say right. that all you want, but it's not... I mean, it's just not the... It's not true. And, of course, I did some digging on this subject and came up with a story out of uh, El Diario, which is a a Spanish-speaking uh, newspaper website. And the children's ages are 13, 9, and 10. We're not comfortable with the situation. And they told their mother... Remember, these are stepkids. And they told her mother, and that's where things kind of went awry. Uh, the police report says that the woman was drunk when she took off her clothes with the intention of proving something to the children. Uh, is proving something to the children a crime as well? Nope. I prefer, I prefer the, the scientific method, personally. Uh, to, to nudity. Uh, I'm just going to prove something. I mean, however, if, if, if any women out there want to prove something to me and send me nudes, that's just fine. Uh, please don't. Please don't. I, no, I, I really don't need that in my life. That's Connie will joke. kill you. No, sh- Ooh, sorry, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that. I forgot we were doing a show when you said that. Like, no, I really fear her. <laughs> I really am scared. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, she beats me. Uh, so, no, that's that's not that's not it. In the in the three counts of facing three counts of lewdness in front of a child, I have a hard time putting toplessness and calling it lewd behavior. I mean, maybe that's because the the life has jaded me so much that it takes a little more than 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 that to to qualify as lewd is it inappropriate absolutely is it something that the ex-wife needs to talk to her ex-husband about absolutely um is it is it even something that could be taken into custody um hearings absolutely is it a sex crime absolutely not it's also a misdemeanor which is an odd thing to have you know on a sex offender registry for like are we really to that point well and we talked about this with the halloween story there are so many ways to end up on the sex registry sex offender registry and apparently hanging sheetrock with your boobies hanging out is one of them at home at home in your own home I mean, at what point was the dad responsible for, like, escorting the kids out or something? Do you know what I'm getting at? Like, it, it there was another adult there. Why is she the only one that's being held 
Yeah, that would, I, that would be my in, inequitable under the law aspect. That would be my concern because, yeah, he wasn't showing his parts, but he was standing right there. Yeah, that, and I could tell you this much. One of the stories I read said they were they were doing insulation in the garage when they disrobed, and as a guy who works in attics, and, and I'm gonna tell you something about insulation. I want to wear as many clothes as I can stand in the heat to keep fiberglass off of my body because it's you know it's bad it you know it, it gets in you cre- you know creates you know creates pimples and all that stuff because it's you know it's tiny little fibers of glass that get to get in your pores um and sheetrock's not really great for you either so i i don't know what they were doing i don't know the explanation that she was drinking sounds more plausible but is this really something the law needs to be involved in no, it's a dispute between an ex-wife and a current stepmom and a dad. And at what point do we say that bearing a breast in front of children is lewd? Apparently when their stepmother does it. Well, we we all agree that that breastfeeding is fine. And we all agree that you can you can whip them out in front of an eighteen year old. Somewhere in between, it becomes lewd, uh, according to according to Utah. It is Utah right? I was, yeah, yes. So I have a hard time call. Like I said, I have a hard time calling it lewd. I also have a hard time going along with her story that they were just hanging sheetrock and didn't want dust on their stuff, so they got naked. You, know, you don't. You, you guys don't own old shirts, right? I, I think another thing too is just the question about the sex offender registry sh- should be always: Is this person a predator? Is this person dangerous? And she's not. Right. And look, yeah, I, I'm with you. And you know, it's I know it's it's horrible radio for us to agree, but as far as the sex offender thing, that is that's offensive. Because there, because when you lump somebody who, even if she did have too many drinks, to try to prove a point that, you know, she should have the same rights as as her husband. Uh, to equate that and and lump that in with with sex registry, or sex offender with somebody who diddles babies. And to put those two people together as one group is 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 awful. It's a, it minimizes the crime of the of the real predator to lump her in with it, and it really puts a puts a label on on this young woman who will have to wear that for the rest of her life that she's a sex offender, and most people won't let her get the sentence out of her mouth that I took my shirt off and my stepkids were around. Yeah. It's just excessive, and it's not productive, and it will limit her employment opportunities. It will limit her abilities with her stepchildren, any future children she may have, and for what? Something that happened in their own home that when she didn't, I mean, come on. And look, this ex-wife is probably, is a witch. I mean, she couldn't just pick up the phone, call her ex-husband, like, look, would you please ask Tilly to put, put the boobies away? Right. Your whore wife? Isn't that what everyone does these... I mean, what happened to those days? Yeah, I mean, say, you know, good Lord. Can, can she not do that in front of our children? That's it. I mean, it, that, that's, that's, that seems... Well, I know, that's way too adult and, uh, and mature to do that, to actually take a problem head on. Instead, you're going to call the police. <laughs> like... Next thing you know, she'll be calling and complaining about her neighbor's helicopter. Yeah, and that's the thing. It was in her home, in her garage. She was not playing Frisbee in the front yard. <laughs> right. Like that <laughs> dumbass last week. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah, that's, a, that's another thing. Like, that woman got $50,000 for her, for her trouble, literally, after she was cited for playing frisbee outdoors in front of everybody and this woman is in her own home and she's facing a life-changing designation in scarlet letter 
and I think you're you're uh, you're talking about the tale of two very different states because the chick last week was in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. And this is Utah. Yeah, but Colorado. Yeah. No, oh, well, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about geography. No, I know, but I'm just. I was gonna say like. It, it's not like one's just freedom loving and another's not. That like Colorado's where the um, helicopter thing is. Nobody's freedom loving. No, they it's just a lo- joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's like they only like the freedom they want, and everybody else should be restricted. Yeah, you know, I love freedom except for my neighbor to land a helicopter. So, your closing thought. So I read this article last week about how the stock market is doing so wonderfully, but our farm bankruptcies are at the highest they've been in just about the last decade. Um, And our farmers are hurting. And I'm a firm believer that if our farmers are hurting, we'll soon be hurting if we're not already, or it's, you know, the beginning of a very big problem. And I think that it's one of those things where Agriculture is being under discussed right now because you either support your president and you support the tariffs or you're against the tariffs and you don't support the president. And that's really as far as most people are diving into this issue. And it goes well beyond that because of all the subsidies and the federal dependency that we've established and continue to make worse. And I would just encourage people instead of looking at agriculture and our farmers and the economy from a political perspective, like take the partisanship out of it because both sides have manipulated agriculture and everything else, but agriculture specifically to the point where it can't even operate without government intervention. And um, just like look at it holistically and understand that we are headed for some dark times. And that's my positive thought for the week. Well, as we close out, agriculture is a very complicated subject. Part of it is inheritance taxes. Uh, the government coming in saying, "Hey, this farm is worth five million dollars," including all the equipment and everything else, and going to the heirs and go, "Oh, by the way, you owe us two point five million, and here's your bill," causing a lot of heartache with with family farms. Uh, labor prices are up, as I am keenly aware, with a with a three percent unemployment. Uh, fewer people are are jumping at the opportunity to go uh, work on a farm, especially at affordable rates. Uh, so there's a there's a lot of things going on there. Anyway, so keeping with the idea of being cheery for our, our <laughs> final thoughts. Ralston strips key critic of House Committee post being petty. Uh, what? Oh, I know. I know you're shocked. Are you sure? <laughs> R. Ralston? Yeah. So State Rep. David Clark said he was the victim of political retaliation after Ralston removed him as chairman of the Interstate Cooperation Committee months after he spearheaded a failed attempt to remove the speaker from office. Look, this is the Casey Cagle School of Politics, which is, it's not about policy, it's about effing politics. The man who lost how many counties? 157 out of 159 counties rejected Casey Cagle in July of 2018. And that's what made it so hard to, and this this goes back to Ralston, who's an attorney, uh, a defense attorney, uh, claiming that he's always on state business and his... Uh, uh, clients never have to go to uh, go to court and we're not just talking about like you know somebody who got caught with a dime bag of weed we're talking about wife beaters child abusers rapists who never have to go to court and the cases eventually just get dropped because you know it's a decade that these these victims have been waiting for justice um, so it's if you're going to commit a coup d'etat make sure you got the numbers and it's something I told our reps out here when this was when people were prodding them to to go after Ralston. Like you better make sure you have the numbers before you do, or you'll never get another piece of legislation through. And that's that's what's going to happen. Is he he is a enemy list having mf'er? 
He is, and we can get in. We could really spend another hour just dis- dissecting what has happened over the last eight months because of this, and what's going to happen in come primary season and everything else. But at the same time, he did have the numbers. They had the numbers. They had chairman. They had people. They had representatives from your area who had agreed to stand up and then back down. And on a Thursday, I believe the numbers were there. And on Friday, when they showed up the people who were supposed to be the top six on the sponsor backed out because they didn't want their bills to die. They didn't want to lose their committees. They didn't want to lose their spot as, you know, I don't know, some sort of leader within the caucus. They they didn't want to. They weren't willing to take that sacrifice and take that hit. And so they sat idly by and got things that they wanted passed and apparently were a better state for it, you know. And, we will, and, and he will continue to be speaker because the people up in Blue Ridge love – having their guy as speaker. Thanks, Blue Ridge. Yeah, yeah, I talked to people, oh, he's a friend of mine. Oh, yeah, I know Dave Ray. He's one of the best. At what? I mean, look, if I get charged with a crime, I'm going to hire the guy, but outside of that, (laughs) outside of that, he's the best at what? It's certainly not uh, legislation. It sure as hell is not being speaker. What is he the best at? So anyway, that's not meant to get into another story. Uh, If you like what you heard, please like and share us on social media. Give us a rating on the platform, which you use to listen to us, and give us the maximum amount of stars. If you didn't like us, give us the maximum amount of stars. It doesn't cost you anything. And remember that if you have any constructive criticism, three prongs per week, one email. That's it. So for Jessica Solange, I'm Dave Roberts. Have a very happy Thanksgiving.